Riding at Home with ABOR's Housing Economist, Claire Losey. Okay, hey guys, we're driving at home with Dr. Claire Losey again this week. Claire, what's happening in new construction? We haven't talked about that in a while. Sure. So overall, we've seen a downtick in permits for single family, two to four units, i.e. townhomes, duplexes, all of that sort of stuff, as well as multifamily. And that's really been precipitated by the doubling of interest rates since March of 2022. That's caused, of course, financing costs for um, developers and new home builders to increase. And of course, that's also decreased demand, especially on the single family side for new homes as well. And when you're talking about that downtick in starts, are you seeing, or applications for starts, I should say, is that specific to the city of Austin, across the region? Where are those numbers coming from? So that's for the MSA, our five-county region. And overall, we've seen from March of last year to March of this year, a decline of about 39% for single family, about 38% for two to four units, and then a little bit lower about 25, 26% for multifamily units. So multifamily units have generally fared the best among the three categories, but overall, you know, again, a moderation in activity in that sector as well. Do you have any figures or, or understanding of what the total absorption of currently built new construction is? Like how many specs are builders sitting on these days? Do we have an idea on that? I don't know that we can point to specific figures I think the general consensus right now is that the new homes that are being built are generally faring pretty well, that, you know, builders are more accommodative right now with points, you know, some discounts, et cetera. They're being more flexible in that regard to try to get homes off the lot. Obviously, it certainly behooves them to to get those homes um, sold as quick as possible so they don't have to sit on the the financing, you know, continued financing costs of that. Yeah, it's an expensive endeavor for builders to hang on to inventory any longer than they have to, certainly. Right, right. What What are we seeing in terms of just lot movement? You know, there's the starts themselves, but before that, they ready and acquire the land. Are we seeing any much movement on that end of the market? So we've also seen a decline in just sheer lot purchases. Zonda reporting last week at a conference I attended that lots were down about 25, 26% in the greater Austin area. Yeah. And the significant, the significance of that, as I think about it, is that that's the long tailed indicator of available housing stock for our future concerning when we see the builders pull back on moving lots, because that means that we're not going to have as much new stock available moving right. forward. Right. And this is really important, too, when we think about our continued population growth right. with respect to, you know, our new owner-occupy units and runner-occupy units. We're certainly expecting to see a pretty strong uptick over the next 5, 10, 15 years, you know, between about 12 and 17 percent over the next five years for for owner and, and runner-occupied households and then right. closer to one quarter to one third. Over we're the still seeing years. essentially we're still seeing all you know generally uh, rapid growth still <laughs> people right. are still moving here they still need places to live but we're slowing up on what will potentially be the availability of places for them to live long term right and then as our supply becomes more constrained of course that spills over into affordability and we've already seen affordability diminish on the Um, single family side, of course, with the increase in mortgage rates. So this is just kind of a double whammy, right? That as we're experiencing this downturn in in new construction, then that's going to play out in the long run as well and um, won't be able to alleviate those affordability constraints. And I think as I think about um, what ABOR can do on this front, too, I think about uh, a meeting I was in recently with the assistant city manager in Austin that oversees the planning and development and housing departments in talking about how we ease up, you know, the process, the regulatory constraints to building so that if we already recognize that we're not moving lots as quickly as we were and we recognize that Austin is a relatively difficult and expensive place to build, anything we can do to alleviate those pressures is beneficial from an affordability standpoint long-term. 
And that's the work that the advocacy team at Avor does to try to support the market overall. Absolutely. And it's really imperative to recognize that there are advantages and disadvantages to regulations, right? On the one hand, they protect our health, welfare, and safety, or should. That's their intended purpose. And then on, but on the other hand, there they are, we have to recognize that they're an artificial constraint, right, on the land. And anytime you impose such a constraint, you're artificially inflating or inducing upward pressure on prices or rents. So there's this trade-off that we have to make, right? You know, on the one hand, we want things like minimum building standards, but on the other hand, you know, it's trying to figure out that balance so that, like you said, we're facilitating greater affordability throughout the region. Right, right. Well, Claire, what do we see in just week over week this week in the market? So we have seen an uptick in um, closed sales and in pending listings. So we should see a continued uptick in closed sales on a week over week basis. In the MSA, sales increased about 32% and pendings increased about 7%. So definitely more activity this week than last. And then on the leasing front, we also saw an uptick in closed leases of about 23%, a little bit of a decline in pendings. But all in all, last week was a pretty solid week. So still feeling kind of like the buzzy spring market that you predicted. We still think it's been pretty active overall. Relatively active. Of course, the overall spring home buying season has been a little bit more temperate, right, than we would otherwise anticipate. But given what's happening, all of the factors, broader macroeconomic forces that are circulating right now through the broader economy, you know, this is, we're doing pretty well, all in all. Great. Well, Claire, thank you so much. I know your expertise is valued by the members and you've been out and about with members scheduling presentations. If you are in a brokerage that would like Claire to come hang out and talk about the market with in more detail and more depth, please give us a shout. Communications at abor.com will help schedule that for you. And we're looking forward to talking again next week. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. Mm-hmm.